Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, good evening, good evening. My name is John Shaquille Poitier Jr. And welcome back to my podcast, Darling, I'm Depressed Again, Don't Tell My Mother, where we discuss mental health and mental health related topics in their youth, the elderly, teenagers, high schoolers, primary schoolers, college students, tertiary school students, straight school students, all nationalities, creeds, and races, all different types, shapes, and Everything that you can think of, listen, once you are a person, once you are breathing, we have something for you. Now, each episode, we have a certain word that ties everything together. It gives the episode a certain theme, if you will, right? And the theme for this episode is none other than, drum roll please, self-love. Boy, that was a sucky drum roll. Anyway, self-love is... The theme for this episode, it's the word for this episode, it's going to describe everything that we are talking about. And without further ado, let's get into it. So like I said before, and I've mentioned this before on the podcast much earlier on, growing up I was very different. You know, I did not fit into the traditional stereotype of what a young man growing up in the Caribbean should be. Didn't fit into it, still don't fit into it. Only difference now is I don't care. (laughs) But growing up, I cared a lot. And I cared so much so because I saw the way it affected the relationships that I had, you know, when it comes to family and friends. I saw the way that it affected it because, and I've mentioned this before, like I said, the Caribbean is a very traditional place. And as an untraditional person, you know, who has all of these quirks and all of these differences and who is very unique, it was not to say hell, but it was kind of difficult at times to connect with people, mainly because everyone had an expectation of what I should be, and I didn't go with that expectation, right? So when it comes to especially my family and relationships in general, I had a habit of self-compromise or compromising myself. Whereas I knew I had my little things that made me different or my little quirks, but I was willing to hide those parts of myself because I thought that if I did, it would make people love me. Right, like, or it made it would help me to think that people would be more loving to me, or people would be more open to me, or I would make more friends, or you know, I wouldn't be seen as weird or what's not. It just would it would help me if I hid parts of myself, and that's where that trait of self compromise began with me, and I carried it for a very long time, even coming into I think like the early, 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 early parts of college. I carried it with me because I made a correlation between the parts of myself that I hid and the parts of myself that other people didn't like, right? And when I say parts of myself, for example, let me give an example. As I I was in Little League growing up, I was in Little League. I despised it entirely. And I know what y'all are thinking because it was like... Another example of a tradition. You know, boys like sports. Boys like playing sports. I didn't like that. I did not like that at all. And it was something so weird. And my cousin even told me about it the other day. But it was like, there were times where I would do things just to cause the team to lose. And which in hindsight is very a crappy thing for me to do. Just because I didn't want to be there. Now, mind you, I expressed I didn't want to be there. So hold on, hold on. Before you get up in arms, right? I expressed I didn't want to be there. But I still was forced to go. I didn't want to be in Little Leagues. I despised Little Leagues. I really did not like it. I just found no interest in it. It wasn't something I wanted to do. I would much rather be reading a book. But, you know, boys play sports. So following that tradition, following that stereotype, I went to play the Little League. And I would like to say that years later, it taught me some lessons about playing on the team and you know, it instilled some type of value and lesson in me deep inside my heart that I will never forget. But honestly, it didn't do any of that. I, for at least for me, it it just it didn't. I I didn't I didn't appreciate it. Uh, 
in the ways that people probably think that I should have. And it was primarily because I had no genuine interest in it. I had no genuine interest in it. But that's neither here or there. I did the Little League, didn't like it, despised it. But I saw that when I did it, it made people proud of me, right? Like doing it, doing something that I hated made people proud of me. So I continued to do it because, well, first off, first and foremost, at first I had no choice. And also, I just wanted to be loved for some form of myself. In my mind, at that point in time, it was like, I'm too different. I'm too strange. I'm too what's not. And I just need to be loved for some form of myself, even if that part of me isn't who I actually am. So... I'll be loved for being a baseball player, even though I suck at baseball and I really don't. I just, I, 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 I ain't got it. I ain't got it for y'all. And at that young age, even at that young age, I learned how to compromise who I was as a person just so that I can accommodate other people's feelings. So I could, I could connect with other people. I learned to dim my light or dim how I felt about things so that other people's emotions and feelings and everything could shine through. I learned how to do that at that young age. And it messed me up for a very long time, honestly, because I went throughout a lot of my friendships and even some familiar relationships that I had being treated in a way that I shouldn't have been treated. Because I was so afraid to lose people. I was so afraid to get rid of people that I would allow my own heart to be broken in order for them to make themselves feel greater or make themselves feel better about themselves. I would allow myself, I would allow myself to be feel terrible. I would allow my own mind to go in disarray just so that person, just so that individual can feel some type of boost or some type of, you know, confidence. I did that and it hurt me so badly because I know that it's a messed up way to go looking at life. But at the point in time, it was quite literally my reasoning is I don't want to lose anybody. I don't want to lose People, I don't want to lose the connections that I've made or the friends that I had or the friends that I'm having. I don't want to lose that. Because as a person, like I said, who didn't have friends for a very long time, when I finally started making friends or when I finally started connecting with, you know, my family, it was so different for me. It was so strange because it was like, this is what it's like not to be alone, essentially. This is what it's like not to be alone. And that came back to bite me in the butt because a lot of times when you go out seeking, and which is something I've learned, when you go out seeking connection, connection finds you, but not in the way that you want it to, not in the genuine ways that you want it to. And it took me a long time to learn how to recognize when people are not actually there for me as a person, but as a resource. As in, they view me not as a friend, but as someone they have something to gain from. Which in itself, that's in itself is a hurtful thing. And then you have some people who will call you a friend or will call you, you know, this such and such and whatever. But genuinely speaking, they don't consider you as a human being. Like they don't consider the way things make you feel or they don't consider how their actions make you feel. And those two categories can be so finicky and it can be so difficult to deal with that, especially when all your life you didn't really have anything friend-related or like close connection related before 
And self-love comes in because self-love says you have to love yourself enough to know when someone doesn't value you or when people don't value you, right? Like self-love tells you, you know that this person doesn't consider you, this person doesn't care about you, this person doesn't actually value you. And you're allowing them to mistreat you or you're allowing these things to happen because you don't value yourself enough to walk away, right? And in my head, it makes so much sense to say that, but as a person who compromised himself so much for others, other people, when you compromise your entirety, yourself, your sense of being for so long, it ends up being a question of who you really are. Because when you are constantly remolding and reshaping your sense of identity to fit into the constraints of others' perception and what they expect you to be, you do it so much and you do it so often that you end up forgetting who you were in the first place, right? I change myself so that this person may love me and I change myself so many times that I forgot what I was in the beginning. I forgot the person that I genuinely was. And it can play a toll on your mind because all that constant changing and all that constant forcing yourself to adapt to the circumstance, that for constant forcing yourself to be who they need you to be, to fit into what this relationship needs you to fit in as, to do everything that this relationship needs you to do, constantly doing that causes you to become disassociated from yourself. At least for me, it caused me to become disassociated from myself. I became unfamiliar with myself. I was a stranger to my own mind, to my own body, to my own self, self sense of person. I just, I was a stranger to me. I didn't know who I was. I mean, I know who I am to people. I know I'm your cousin. I know I'm your brother. I know I'm your son. I know I'm your friend. But outside of the familial connections, and my friend asked me this question the other day, and it was so valid. Outside of the relationships and what I mean to people, outside of what we mean to each other, who am I? And that was the biggest issue for me, identifying who I am outside of what I mean to others or identifying who I am outside of the barriers of the relationships that I am in, the relationships that I work to be a part of. Who is John Shaquille Poitier Jr. outside of being someone's brother, best friend, son, cousin, uncle? Who am I outside of that? And a lot of times we don't ask ourselves that question because it can be so difficult to realize that we have broken pieces of ourselves off in order to fit into the puzzle of someone else's life. We have effectively crushed ourselves. We crush our own spirits. We eliminate the parts of ourselves that are unique and the parts of ourselves that are beautiful and sometimes wonderfully extravagant messes, we take away those parts because they don't fit into other people's lives. They don't fit into other people's concepts of what reality should be. So we take away those parts and we end up hurting ourselves because when we take away those parts of ourselves, it's now like, who the hell am I? You know, if I've taken away everything that makes me, makes me unique, if I've taken away everything that makes me special just to fit into your life, okay, great. Now I fit into your life. Now who am I? And you need to have that self-love. Like you need to love yourself enough to know that I can eliminate a key part of myself in order to appease someone else, regardless of whether they're a family or a friend. I just can't do that. It's a very difficult thing to recognize and a very difficult thing to say, but it's not worth it. It's never worth it. I wish that I had realized that, and I will say this often, I wish that I had realized that when I was younger, you know, I don't have to eliminate parts of myself. I don't have to get rid of parts of myself in order to make space in relationships that I'm not supposed to be in. I don't have to do that, but I did it anyway. And it ended up costing me anyway, because for a long time after that, I struggled with 
Who is John? Who is JJ? What is JJ? What does JJ mean to JJ? What does JJ mean to everyone else? What is my identity? I know that I am smart because people tell me that I'm smart, but do I believe it? I know that I'm amazing because people tell me that I'm amazing, but do I believe it? See, everything that I knew, everything that I believed about myself initially became contingent on what, how other people viewed me or how other people understood me to be. Yeah, and it's, it's just a big mess, honestly speaking. A gigantic mess. Let me make a huge mess of things. Because some people never recognize the fact that they are self-compromising. They are just in their minds or in our minds. Sometimes we think that we're just, you know, going with the flow. We don't want to be a rock in the middle of the river. We just want to be a part of the river. We don't want people to go around us or go over us or go under us. So we become a part of the river. We flow with things and we're just, you know, going with the flow. But sometimes we go with the flow so much that it's hard to identify what who was there in the first place. Like, what what was going on in the first place? Who was I in the first place? We forget that. And coming back from that place can be so difficult, especially if you don't love yourself enough to do so. Because it takes work and commitment, and it takes a genuine desire to want to do so. Honestly speaking, like you have to want to break out of that mindset of, I'm tired of having to change myself and a and remold myself and renew and redo myself just so that I can fit into your life. I don't want to have to do that. Especially if there's no mutual benefit. And I'm not talking about improving yourself, right, to maintain a relationship. I'm not talking about improving yourself to maintain a relationship. I'm talking about degrading yourself. I'm talking about accepting Constant hurt and pain and rejection in a relationship just so that you can say that you have a friendship or connection in the first place. That's what I'm speaking about. And so many times we want to do these things just to say that we have them. We want to be a part of these things just to say that we are a part of them. I'm willing to accept the hurt and the pain and I'm willing to take everything just so that I can say I have a friend just so that I can say I have a family member. I'm willing to take whatever you can throw at me just so that I can say this person is in my life and I love them and they love me and that's okay. No matter what they do to me, no matter what they say to me, no matter how they treat me. And listen, I believe love is an action. Love is an action. Someone can tell you that they love you, but they can ju- they're just saying that they act- actually have to show it. Right? So no matter how much someone in your connection might say to you, I love you, I love you, I love you, if you don't see them consciously making the actions, doing the actions to show that they love you, that person don't care about you. They do not. They genuinely don't. That person don't rate you. They don't rate you. They don't care about you. They don't care about how you feel. They don't care about what you go. They genuinely don't. Right? And it's hard to hear that, but it's the truth. And I had to recognize that for myself. You telling me you love me, I'm telling you I love you. I'm doing the actions to show that I love you. You don't love me because you're not showing it through your actions. Love is a conscious choice to me. You have to choose to love people. You have to choose to love yourself. Because you have to choose to carry out the actions that portray that self-love or that love towards someone else. You have to choose to do that. And we have a habit as human beings of choosing people who refuse to choose us. We have a habit of considering people who refuse to consider how we feel when They do something that can be destructive towards us. We have a habit of prioritizing people who do not prioritize us. As human beings, some of a lot of us are just like that. We're like we're just we're just like that. We like bad treatment, apparently. But 
you have to break away from it. Like I was saying before at the beginning, that little league thing, I didn't want to do that. Even if something as small as that, like this is the smallest example I could get, but I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. Genuinely speaking, I didn't want to. Think about it now. It still pisses me off because I didn't want to. If I go back to it, I re go back in my head, still thinking, I still didn't want to. But guess what? I did it, and it didn't in any way. Thinking about it later on, it didn't impact me in any way that was meaningful to me. It just didn't. And not to say from lack of trying, because I went into it thinking, okay, I'm going to do my best and I'm going to be my best and I'm going to try my hardest because this is going to make so many people proud and they are going to love this. So I'm going to do this for them and and for myself. Like, I'm going to be like, I'm going to end up falling in love with this. This is going to be so great. This is going to be so amazing. Nigga, I hated it. (laughs) I didn't, I, I, like, none of that, none of that came true for me. None of it. And I was like, but I said that I would do it, and I, and I wanted to do it, and I uh, all of this, like, I genuinely, you know, like, I, but at the end of the day, because it was something that I honestly, within my heart, knew I did not want to do or be a part of, I just absolutely, yeah, kaput, nothing. And that's the same way for relationships. In our hearts, deep down, we know That person don't care about us. That person don't mess with us. Those people don't mess with us. Those people don't give a crap about us. Deep down in your heart, you know. You know deep down in your heart. And you're still forcing away. We still try to force away into their lives. We still try to force them to look at us and view us and respect us and care for us. Deep down in our hearts, we just want the people that we accept and love to love and accept us. That's all we ever really want. But let me give you a little wake-up call. If they don't do the actions to consciously show that they love you, and you have expressed this, and they still haven't done anything to change it, they're not going to. That person don't love you. That person do not care. Walk away. Walk away. Walk away. Walk away from it. Literally, no, walk away from it. You compromising yourself for a person that don't care about you? Come on, man, come on. That's the talk I had for myself. It was like, John, you saying all of this, you keep saying all of this to these people, to your friends, to whoever. You keep saying all of this, like, you keep telling them, hey, this, that, this, that, and the third, this, that, and the third, this, that, and the third. At some point, you got to realize you're talking to empty air. Because them niggas don't care. They really do not care. They do not care. They don't. They don't care. And the more you try to get them to understand your point, the less they do. And the more you try to get them to understand how they make you feel, the less they want to. So guess what? You have to make the conscious choice to love yourself enough to put one foot in front of the other and keep on moving. Just keep on moving. You have to. It's kind of like essential that you do. If you want to remember who you were, if you realize that you've gotten away from yourself, you've gotten away from who you were, who you were trying to be, you have, like, all of that has gone away. In order to reclaim the parts of yourself that you have lost, in order to start growing again, you got to walk away from it. You got, you got to. You just got to. You, like, it, you have no other choice but to do so if you want to be better. A relationship should not be a prison. A relationship should not be chains. A relationship should not be a constraint or a hindrance. It should not be something that restricts you from growing. So if you realize that you are in a relationship, a friendship, a familial connection, whatever you in, and you're not growing as a person, you realize that every time you say something, every time you interact with this person, you leave feeling broken, you need to go. You got to go. You need to go. You got to go. And sometimes it can even be that way for us. Sometimes we can be terrible friends. Sometimes we can be terrible people. Sometimes people need to walk away from us because we may use them, because we may hurt them, 
because we may have not considered them, because we may have neglected how they felt. And when someone wants to walk away from you because of how you treated them, let them. Let them. Because another messed up thing that we do is we fight to keep people in our lives when we know we don't value them. Whoosh, mic drop. We fight for people to have a place in our lives when we know we didn't want to give it to them in the first place. And for some reason, it's so insane. We like to just, we like to have that person on just right there, right? I don't want to actually care about you, but I just want to have access to you in case I need you. Or I don't want to actually care about you, but I just want to have you there in case I just feel like, you know, saying, oh, this is my friend, this might this, that, and the third. There are so many people I had to stop speaking to, I had to stop interacting with because I realized, and it hurt me so badly, but I realized that they just genuinely didn't care. Or maybe it could have been that I didn't care about how they felt. And when I realized that as a person, I did I stopped not necessarily caring, but I stopped prioritizing how they felt as well. It made me realize maybe me and this person should not be friends because we're not growing together. We're growing apart. Maybe I shouldn't maintain this connection because at the end of the day, there is no mutual benefit. There is no mutual. And I'm not saying benefit as in this person has to always do something for me. This person, I always have to do something for this person as in this person is the only one allowed to feel happy or I'm the only one allowed to feel happy in this friendship. It shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be where in a connection there's someone else's feelings is prioritized over the next. It shouldn't be like that. And I do not feel as if that lack of balance can be sustained for a long period of time. It just cannot. It cannot. So, with self-love, learning to distance yourself from the version of you that compromises in order to be accepted or loved by somebody, that's the real struggle that we often have. That's that's the actual battle that we often face. That internal feeling of how do I learn not to compromise? How do I learn to be me and love me and find people or allow people who love me to exist in my life? Not to allow the space to be taken up by people who don't value me for who I am or for what I do. How do I do that? I think that's a real battle that we often have. And solutions for that, honestly, I still, I, not say I struggle with it as much as I used to, actually. Because I actually, (laughs) I actually have two friends in real life. (laughs) (laughs) I have two friends in real life so it's not necessarily a struggle for me anymore however I do understand there are people who probably still go with it so my suggestion for you right as I end up this podcast episode is to evaluate your relationship with yourself and put for example Imagine that you and the person that you're having the connection with, imagine if the roles were reversed. So if they were being treated like you're being treated, could you see yourself treating another person the way that you were being treated in the connection or relationship that you have? And could you see yourself watching another person allow themselves to be devalued and degraded in this way. And when you do that, I want you to put that into perspective of, into the perspective of you and how you receive things, how you interact and how you love yourself. And that's basically all you could do.
From there, you make your choices. And from those, those choices, you move on and you do what you got to do. But remember, self-love is the best type of love. Because when you love yourself, nobody can trick and kill you. <laughs> nobody. Well, that is all for today. My name is John Shaquille Poitier Jr. And this has been my podcast, Darling. I'm depressed again. Don't tell my mother. Until next time.